you together on this Friday, TGIF. Um, again, uh, I know every day kind of seems like Friday, maybe now, <laughs> but um, nonetheless, uh, hopefully um, it means that maybe uh, the next two days you can focus a little bit on other things than maybe work um, if you're doing that while you're home. But before you switch that focus, we want to make sure you stay very focused on this conversation we're having today. I'm so grateful that uh, on our uh, YWTV episode today to be um, sharing with two of our friends at the YW, and also I count them personally, Miss mm -hmm. um, Carithia Oates and Tevra Francis to Hello. join us today. <laughs> Ladies. Um, we know that the key to small businesses is collaborate, collaboration and inclusive mm -hmm. speech. And I can't think of anything that these two ladies embody more than that. Thank and you. Um, specifically, they're doing some amazing work that is very focused on black businesses and businesses of color. Um, and um, they've been doing it before this time that we're in right now that we're living in. And, um, you know, happy to also talk with them a little bit about that pivot that we all have seemed to had to do right now and how they are handling that. So Carithia is the um, founder of the Bergen County Black Business Network, which is a networking and peer advisory group that is under the umbrella of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. We're very happy to support it. It was established to help black entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs um, continue to develop and grow their businesses. Um, he has also 20 plus years of financial planning experience and she's very committed to her clients and our community. Uh, anywhere you go, usually she pops in for a moment to most events. And <laughs> Hi. And then we have Tevra Francis joining us, who Hi. is a publisher of Bergen in Color, a mm -hmm. lifestyle site that mm -hmm. connects um, to the diversity of Burton County through events, news, and philanthropy. Mm -hmm. um, and also a small business uh, supporter. So um, before we jump into other conversations, Tevra, let's talk a little bit about your business because I have to say mm -hmm. you have blown up on the scene. Um, <laughs> like came and you are here. I have to say I'm so um, impressed. I, I've been following you from the beginning and uh, it says two things to me. Mm -hmm. One is mm -hmm. it says a lot about you, you know, as a um, individual that that was able to happen. And two, mm -hmm. it really speaks to you that you filled a need, a, a tremendous need out there that, um, you know, that it just blew up like this. So tell us a little bit about how and why you started your okay. platform and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Well, thank you, Helen. Thank you, Carithia. Hey, um, so, Blew up. So, okay. So let me tell you the story really quickly of Bergen and I know it never goes that fast. Every <laughs> Not in my, over no, really this was like, this know. is, you know, years of, of thinking and contemplating. But again, my name is Tevra Francis and the platform that I founded is called Bergen in Color, uh, which I founded in 2019. So I guess, yeah, it was pretty quick, but I'll, you know, the backstory is, um, the purpose is to connect to the diversity of Bergen County and beyond. Um, uh, when I moved here about seven years ago, I needed to know what was going on for my own self. I needed to know where to get my hair done, where do people go to church, where are the organizations, like all of these things that I needed to know, I couldn't really find um, in one place. So I was working in the city. Um, when I stopped working in the city and I had to be in New Jersey every day, it's like, okay, I really need this now because I can't just hop to Harlem or or do any of those things. I want to be able to support businesses here. And so after, you know, hemming and hawing for, for a while, I decided, okay, let me just test the waters. I started to, you know, Instagram is big. So I just started posting little pictures here and there of things that I saw when I was out, um, events that I attended that I happened upon, like, you know, art festivals and whatnot. So um, Bergen in Color kind of just grew from that. And um, I'm a marketing consultant um, with my, my background is in healthcare. Um, I was working at a hospital. I've worked in health insurance. So I'm very corporate, but um, taking some of those corporate ideals into Bergen in Color, but also I'm learning as an entrepreneur along the way. I have people who mentor me all the time, Carithia, one of them. Uh, so um, the entrepreneurial journey for me has been pretty interesting, but with regards to Bergen and Color, um, I felt like 
if I need this information, then there has to be somebody else that needs it as well. Mm -hmm. And so let me not um, hold it all to myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't claim to be an expert on anything. I don't claim to be an expert on Bergen County or North Jersey or New Jersey. I'm from California, <laughs> to be clear. I'm a, I'm a West Coast girl, but um, I do want to share the things that I've learned and I, that I learned literally every day um, with the people that, I, that are now my neighbors. This is my home. Um, I have a mortgage here. So, <laughs> um, so I really want to share the information with everybody um, as I get it. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I mean, in just the, um, you know, and I, I know that there is no overnight sensation. There's a lot of work that goes behind, you know, all success stories for sure. Mm -hmm. But it definitely seems from when you launched the platform to now, it has grown significantly. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, and again, I think that that is definitely twofold, definitely from what you bring to the table, but also because of the need. Mm -hmm. um, there definitely are, uh, there's so much happening. And I have to say, one of the things that I'm always most struck about your platform, because I spend a lot of time, you know, following it, uh -huh. is the, the, the diversity of the diversity, you know, that's on. Yeah. You, no. have the art, you know, you have the art events, you have the businesses, you have, mm -hmm. you know, restaurants, you have, you know, more corporate types of events, you have self-help mm -hmm. type events, you really cover it all. And, yeah. um, you know, that's you know, great. I try not to be, um, we're not a monolith, not, you know, I, like I said, I'm from California. My parents are immigrants from Jamaica, you know, so I, my experiences are going to be different from Carithia's experience, which are different from your experiences, which we're, there, people have several different interests, several mm -hmm. different intersection, uh, intersectionalities. So I don't want to uh, be an expert on any one thing and I'm not the expert on anything, but I do want to show a glimpse at the, um, activities, a little bit of the life of, of other people, um, people that are different from me, people that are different from, uh, we're all different. So if I can kind of touch on, I'm not going to get too deep into any one thing, <laughs> but I'll touch on it and let, say, hey guys, look at this. And then I'm on to the next thing. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're definitely opening all of our eyes to lots of opportunities in our community. So thank you for creating that platform to do that. So as you as you did share, though, and I know you you uh, mentioned her as one of your mentors, you mm -hmm. know, someone in our community who has for a, a long time been shedding a, a spotlight on black businesses um, ha is Carithia Oates. I mean, this has been a um, personal uh, project of hers that, um, you know, she, you know, uh, put her business behind. And um, I've, you know, been around to watch it grow there as well, so I can um, speak to uh, her commitment uh, to to this as well. So, Carithia, tell us a little bit about the Bergen County Black Business Network. I know that um, our followers are, um, uh, we introduce a lot of the important programs and events that, uh, you know, we support, obviously, with the the Bergen County Black Business Network. But in case anyone who's joining us today is hearing it for the first time, maybe share a little bit about it. Um, well, as you know, I'm, uh, my day job, before I put my cape on, is I'm a financial advisor, uh, associate vice president, portfolio manager at Morgan Stanley in Paramus. I've been here since 2000 in Bergen County, um, and I've always had a heart for small business. The SBA considers a small business any business with less than 500 employees. So a lot of us here that know small businesses may not think of themselves as under 500, that's a very big number. So especially for a black owned business. Um, I've been involved with a number of boards as Helen knows, I've known Helen for maybe 30 years. She's, <laughs> I should not tell her age, right? You don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad the hairdresser doesn't know anymore because I can't go there. Um, Same. <laughs> but uh, so my firm, I was on a number of boards. So I'm the first black female chair of the Bergen County uh, Workforce Investment Board. Uh, and in 2015, and other boards, Bergen, Bergen Community College Women's Institute Board, which I got Helen on that board. I don't know if you're still on that board or not, Helen, um, and other boards. So yes. based on my multiple experiences in boards, I decided uh, before 2015 to get off of all boards because I was on four boards at the time I was the Bergen WIB chair and we recertified two of those boards. So it's a lot of significant work. I also founded the mentor program for the Women's Institute board. I don't know if that's consistently going on now either. Um, our friend uh, Sonia Clark took that over from Suez uh, when you Ooh, and her were both. Sonia. 
Sonia, <laughs> on another supporter of ours. So my firm asked me, based on all my experience in the county and basically life, um, to do an African American initiative in what is our complex, which is Bergen County. So I, of course, because I wasn't going to do anything, they asked me to do something. So of course, I believe in saying yes. And before I go any further, as everybody that knows me, um, friends, clients, associates, I'm a Christian before I'm anything else. So um, I believe that God had brought me to Morgan Stanley. I believe God had asked Morgan Stanley to do this initiative. So I have to say yes. Uh, labor of love. And um, we're trying to find all the black businesses in Bergen County was my focus because economic empowerment I believe come from small businesses. They're the backbone of our society and I have a heart for small businesses. So I feel that the black business owner is the most underserved in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, they're a very small percentage. I think they're like 5%, something like that uh, in Bergen County, um, if that much. And you know, at, as a uh, business, we may be um, the number one starters of business as black business, women owned, women owned business are the number one starters of businesses, but they make the least money. So um, I believe being under the YWCA, which I might hats off to you, Helen, and your board uh, and your team for, for allowing us to be under the Y as a um, focus on moving the needle forward for eliminating racism. Uh, I personally believe economic empowerment eliminates racism. So I, if you're ignorant, mm -hmm. if you don't know how to read, if you don't know how to write, you don't know how to write a checkbook, you don't know how to balance your checkbook, you don't know how to make money, you can't eat, you're gonna be, somebody's gonna be racist against you, even your own people. So I'm trying to level the playing field, which I believe in, in every area of my life. I hope yeah. I uh, yeah, and I have to say, as an organization at the YWCA, it was an easy decision for us to, you know, partner with um, the Bergen County Black Business Network because we do believe in eliminating racism in our work. And I can't think of a stronger way than, again, um, leveling the uh, playing field economically and being able to support black business growth in every way. So, um, you know, we're very proud to have this connection and we've been very happy to have Tevra join the landscape over this last mm -hmm. year and be able to continue to support the growth of her work and vice versa. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk for a moment about um, women owned black businesses and black businesses in general. Um, what change, Carithia, you've been, um, you know, and again, not to, you already gave up our ages because you said how long we knew each other. But, anyway, um, but, I look, but we look good, though. We, we, look good. we were childhood friends. You're 31. We were, yeah. We were, <laughs> um, but, you know, in the in the time that you've been doing this work and, you know, obviously it's been a, a, a lifelong commitment, you know, on your end. What evolution have you seen for black businesses um, that has, you know, more opportunity or less? You know, where where do you think they stand today? Good question. Thank you, uh, Helen. Again, um, I think that I'm a very big believer in the mastermind group, and I'm also a believer in uh, like the business network uh, focus. And people do need to network with each other. As you know, that's basically how I've always been. I believe in networking with people, connecting people. I feel that in the Black community, that's a big challenge. Um, I know that there's a third and fourth shift. Like I go to women's initiatives. As you know, I've supported a lot of women's initiatives. I've never really focused on the Black initiative. Specifically, um, I've been a member of National Association of Black Accountants, which is a Black accounting organization because the, the international or the, the regular uh, accounting association wouldn't accept Black accountants, so they have to create their own. A lot of these national Black organizations are national because the regular quote-unquote white organization uh, didn't support Black professionals coming into them. So. My focus on uh, small business, sorry about that. My focus on uh, black business, people think it's black women business owners, but I'm not focused on black women business owners, even though the majority of our members are women right now. Um, it's for black businesses. And it's a very distinct focus. Teva and I have this conversation all the time because she's focused on people of color, minorities. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on black because what happens and what I've seen happen since I've been in Bergen County and I've checked out different uh, associations that are focused on black businesses, it's a very difficult trek to take because we're very siloish. We have, our, you know, you got Hackensack, you got Englewood, you got Teaneck, and they're all siloed groups focused on their own town maybe. 
but that's where the majority of us are housed. And we really need to communicate with each other. Um, I've been having ongoing conversations with uh, different entities in Bergen County. We're trying to work together. And my goal for BCBBN for us is to work to collaborate or fail. You know, that's the goal, to collaborate or fail. If we don't collaborate, we should fail because we have to support each other. And I don't think we do a good enough job of supporting each other. And my nephew is a um, the first black sergeant in Parsippany Police Department, and he does motivational speaking for black males only. He will not do them for women because he feels that we are being supported, but the black males are being left behind. So that is why my focus, we're looking for black business owners, not just black women business owners, because just like the world and economic world knows when you have a diverse board, men and women, different races, in our case, black, but different types of black people. We have people from all different parts of the world that are members of our group. We have Haitian people from people from Bermuda, Sri Lanka, hey Deidre, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'm African-American from America, from New Jersey. So right. we have all different kinds of, and we have someone from Beckway. Where's Beckway? I don't know. Near St. Vincent, I think, you know, so we are all different people as black people. And we need to be focused on the fact that it's a beautiful thing that we are all different because in the differences that we are, as we all know, we are more alike than we are different. Thank you. So, Tevra, what are your thoughts about, um, you know, kind of the evolution of black businesses and where we are today with them? Um, well, so I uh, mentioned earlier that I'm a marketing consultant. So one of my clients is the Sisters in Business Expo, which is the nation's only uh, multi-city expo that features and celebrates entrepreneurial women of color. And what I have um, learned through that experience is that, again, the diversity of Black women and the diversity of our businesses, um, you know, we have, you know, traditionally you think hairdressers, you think restaurants, but you know, um, a lot of us are getting into the digital digital space, the tech space. Um, accountants are, are 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 figuring out ways to do more work as far as um, uh, fintech and and those types of tools. Um, we're in everything, and if we do the research, if we dig um, to try to find uh, black women in um, any type of industry, where you you'll usually find at least one of us in there, um, you know, trailblazing or, or following a trail that somebody else has laid for us. But um, one of the things that I'm really impressed about uh, going forward, like in this current time, is that we're utilizing all of these, you know, tech tools, social media, um, all of these uh, Silicon Valley um, products, or Atlanta is new, the, the, the black Silicon Valley, all of these <laughs> things are coming out of, uh, of, of our community that are really helpful to us. The, the reason why I found my hairdresser, shout out to Tina Pearson Salon in Edgewater, um, was through an app that was started by black women. So um, so we need to like embrace all of these other types <laughs> of um, businesses and celebrate, you know, what kept us going with, you know, barbershops, hairdressers, restaurants, churches, all of those things that historically have, have been our bread and butter but we also need to encourage them and encourage ourselves to explore um, other avenues. Uh, you know, medicine. Um, we we have you know there's there's uh, Bergen dermatology that's black owned. Mm -hmm. um, we have sisters and brothers everywhere. So we need to like really explore mm -hmm. and support all of these areas that we are finding ourselves in. Yes, and I have a black dentist right down the street from me. Like right down. Oh, I have a black doctor. <laughs> I married one. <laughs> thing, ah, there you go. Just to, to, to pivot off of that, of what uh, Tever is saying, mm -hmm. also, like, look at some of our members. Look at Tia Jackson. You interviewed her the other day with uh, SBA, the, the head of the SBA. Yeah. And she pivoted. Now she's doing mm -hmm. things. I think another another member of ours, Tammy Felton, who owns mm -hmm. Farm. They Farm. Uh, mm -hmm. She's doing a Friday thing. Tever probably knows better because that's... So they are doing... So TJ Southern um, Gourmet in... in Inglewood, New Jersey, has teamed up with uh, the Tammy Felton Agency and um, Inglewood Parks and Rec, and in the meantime, which is a 501c3, to have Give Back Friday. So what they've done is have people um, register a senior, and um, they've provided, they're, today they're providing meals for about 60-ish seniors in various um, housing developments and areas in Inglewood, New Jersey. So that's something that's amazing that just goes to the collaboration of all of these different facets of Black business, Black female-owned businesses, 
um, to do something altruistic and help the community during this critical time. And Sammy's business is all the way up in Wyckoff. Yeah, we're from Bergen County. <laughs> But I'm just saying, they're not even in the same, like normally it's Teaneck, Teaneck, Englewood, Englewood, Hackensack, Hackensack. She's yeah. in White Claw. They're both BCBBN members. Mm -hmm. Also, we have Angela Logan over here at mm -hmm. Apple Cake. Mm -hmm. She sells her cakes at Tia's, mm -hmm. at TJ's. Yeah. And well, by the way, the evolution is they need to order stuff from them online. They need more online ordering. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that was, you know, as uh, you raised Tia and it was in my mind to, to share one of the things and that kind of gets us right out to um, kind of the state of where we are right now mm -hmm. and how to how businesses are pivoting to try to stay strong, you know, during mm -hmm. this time. Uh, we've been having that conversation every Friday since we launched these YWTVs to focus on that. Um, and as you both know, Tia joined us a few weeks ago and, um, you know, we talked about how she, you know, has been doing that. And she was really clear that, you know, collaboration with her neighbors around mm -hmm. her and, mm -hmm. you know, elsewhere has been key for her. Yeah. So let's, um, you know, send a message in a conversation for other black businesses that mm -hmm. may be watching. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some ways that they can stay strong? I mean, I know we know this historically that, um, you know, there are a lot of opportunities out there for economic government support, you mm -hmm. know, for businesses. But, you know, when we look at the numbers, black businesses aren't accessing them at the rates that they should be and could be, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to get support. And, you know, that is one of the goals that we both had, Carithia, with bringing yep. the black business network to the mm -hmm. YW was be able to create more, um, hopefully more of an opportunity, a platform to get that information out there. So right now, right, it's a time where, there have been a lot of funds out there. How can we get more information out and how can we get the black business community to embrace more of these opportunities that are out there for them? Well, I'd like to take a stab at, to start us off. Um, and that's a great question. I've been in communication with a lot of the black business leaders in, in Bergen County. Um, we're going to have a conversation with uh, Jeff Carter. I think mm -hmm. you're on that call as well next week, Deborah, mm -hmm. uh, on to find out what black businesses need. You know, I think a lot of times what happens on these initiatives that these major corporations have for minority community is they just go throw at people what they think they need. Uh, we're going to focus on calling all black businesses in Bergen County to let us know uh, what they need. So you can send an email to me at info at bcbbn.com. Uh, send it to the Y because, you know, if it goes to the Y, it'll get to us because yeah. we're under the Y. Um, and we're going to put stuff out on our Facebook page, but there are also SBDC. So SCORE is one of our affiliate partners. They uh, are retired corporate executives that are mentors to small businesses. We focus with them on black small businesses. So they come to every single one of our events. They had a table at our black bazaar we had with the Y on February 8th at Community Baptist Church in Englewood. Very successful. Um, event was a smart collaboration. Also, they handle people that are startup businesses. It's a free service. We need to take advantage of these free services, which we are not so known to do. We need to start doing that now. Also, the SBDC, which is the um, Small Business Development Corporation of Bergen County. They're also affiliates of ours. They have some information, which I'll make sure to get over to Helen so she could uh, pass it out too. We'll put it on our Facebook page. Please do come to our Facebook page for information as well. Um, and join our Facebook page because we're trying to get information out to people. And part of the information we're trying to get is your information to us. So send us information however way you want, if it's info at BCBBN or otherwise. Um, there's also the SBDC is going to give me information as well as SCORE. So we could send that out as well because there are other companies that are providing loans. I called one of the local banks myself the other day to see, you know, okay, if I were a black business on my own, how can I get this money? And they're like, we stopped taking applications. But there are other people that are taking applications. Uh, I think NAACP is working on it as well. So we're going to work with all these different groups to make it happen. So don't give up. And if they offer you to, to, to get money, apply for it. Don't take the idea that, oh, we'll never get it. You need to apply for it. I just spoke with one other business owner yesterday for a while, and she said that she applied for it five times and she got the money. So it's out there. We are getting it, but we have to be diligent in it, just like everything else in our business. Yeah. Yeah. Tevra, what are what are your thoughts about ways that um, we can get connect? 
the uh, opportunities? Well, Carithia uh, mentioned most of them. So um, what I've done through Bergen and Color is um, the plan was always to have a business directory, but since uh, the COVID um, crisis has hit, I kind of got a kick in the pants to get it started now. So what I've been asking people to do is to register their business um, so that when we get information, I could just blast it out to a specific set of people because for Bergen and Color, we're more general and not everybody's a business owner. So I, it doesn't make a lot of um, sense for me to share information to the broader group when I can have a targeted group that I can refer to Carithia or the Bergen and NAACP or any of those other groups. So we're growing that list. If you um, go to bergenandcolor.com, just go ahead and register. It's free. I'm not, you know, a network. We have several networks in the area. There's the BCBBN, there's the Eagles Network, there are several other networks. I'm not trying to be a network. I just want to share information. So mm -hmm. as long as we keep the lines of communication open amongst each other, I think we can um, navigate through a lot of this. Karithia mentioned the call that's going to happen sometime next week. Mm -hmm. I'll be on it. Um, just listening and, and sharing what I have. As soon as I get information, I, I try to, to share it um, as much as I can. But uh, we need to pay attention. That would be my... Um, advice to black business owners um, and just business owners of color, pay attention. Uh, don't be scared about uh, all of these changes because it moves very quickly. You just have to make sure that you're staying on top of it. Um, I myself, try, you know, have applied and still working on it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But, um, but in the meantime, you know, uh, I read an article in Forbes this week called um, that was talking about crony capitalism mm -hmm. because a lot of the issues have been, um, the funds that are available are going to uh, organizations where they already have es established relationships. And mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't have the, those relationships. So we have to lean on each other because Carithia might know somebody that I don't know. Tammy Felton nice knows a lot of people that I don't know. You know, Kay Lucas knows a lot of people that I don't know. So we have to be able to use our own, you know, cronyism in a way just to get the information and help each other along because um, if we don't stick together and figure this out, it's going to be really difficult for us uh, beyond this particular crisis. So, yeah. And I, yeah. just so everyone who's watching knows, we will link um, on, especially this, this program will live on, on our Facebook page. You guys can share it. And mm -hmm. um, if someone you think should have seen it, missed it, you know, they can watch it later. It will live here. We'll make sure we link um, all of these organizations that we're talking about mm -hmm. and also the opportunity with the links to be able to um, for black businesses that may be watching that aren't connected to either of these two networks, mm -hmm. um, the info uh, email so that you can send your information in. Mm -hmm. I have to say that. Um, you know, talking to Tia a few weeks ago and talking to um, a number of the other small business owners over the last few weeks, it definitely seems like in this time where we've had to social distance and all kind of, mm -hmm. you know, come in doors and, you know, with businesses having to quickly, um, you know, and again, it's become, I think, the the million dollar word pivot, right? Um, everyone had to quickly- I'm so sick of pivot, but go ahead. It, it used to be trans, it used to be transparency. It used to be yeah. agile, remember agile? Right. agile have to be agile. Yeah. And now I feel like the word now, the million dollar word, right? But, um, you know, in order to really, um, you know, in order to really pivot, it does seem like the having that network and, and collaboration you know, have been the key to success um, for any small business, whether or not it's a, a business of color or not. But it, particularly when we're talking about um, developing this network for businesses of color mm -hmm. and for black businesses, you know, under the, you know, um, Burton County Black Business Network. How can we create an environment? I know that, um, you know, yesterday we did a wonderful conversation, too, which I encourage everyone to go back and watch with mm -hmm. Reverend Ashley and. Mm -hmm. Christopher Kwok um, yep. as part of our Stand Against Racism, mm -hmm. there was a lot of conversation about like mistrust and, you know, um, the people feeling comfortable kind of coming together um, and, you know, applying for opportunities and feeling comfortable. You know, how can we, uh, you know, in order to deal with that crony issue, right? I mean, we do have to get, um, we do have to get our black mm -hmm. businesses and our businesses of color to, um, to connect. You know, mm -hmm. to be applying for these funds, to start these relationships. What can we do? What can we do at the YWCA? Right, what can I do as a as a as a individual 
Um, you know, what is a, a community? What can we do to try to create a landscape that um, supports that happening more and more? Well, we're doing it right now. We're, we're communicating with each other. Tever and I, I've met her. I don't even know when I met her. I think down in Newark. Um, but we fell in love with each other the day we met, and because we were like, well, we argued first though about the well, first people of color versus black. Go ahead. <laughs> so, okay, so I have this conversation. I have to share with people. I don't like when people do sideline conversations. I yeah. think it's rude. So, my I have a theory. People that know me know I have a theory for everything. Okay, so I have a theory about being African American because I am an African American born and raised in America. I literally just had this wonderful conversation. Some people call that argument, but it's a wonderful conversation because I think dialogue is good, right, Helen? Mm -hmm. So I was speaking with Adina Bedu, who is African, Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you're not African-American because you're Nigerian. She goes, I am. She was offended. She said, I am African-American. I said, really? And it just totally made my mind open to something different, which is what mm -hmm. this is all about. She's African-American because she's a citizen of America and she's Black. And she said, because of what people that my people went through as slavery in this country, they were able to come into this country as a non-African American and not have to go through slavery like my family may have had to go through. Mm -hmm. So she feels offended that people don't consider her African American or anyone that's not born in America that's black gets offended by being called African American. And I've had this conversation with numerous people, of course, as you know, because your people are from Jamaica. But mm -hmm. I want us to focus on the, the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by it. So we're all African-American if we're citizens. So I've been standing corrected, which I've been corrected before. We are all African-Americans if we're Black and we're American. Mm -hmm. I just don't want us to lose the richness of all who we are. And that's what I don't want to be short-sighted with. So mm -hmm. that is the conversation. Okay. Well, it's, it's like that's what the two of you uh, uh, dialogued. <laughs> right. So we're we're meeting each other. We're talking but, to each other. We're collaborating with each other so that mm -hmm. we can get together because we are, for one thing, the three main towns, Hackensack, Teaneck, and Englewood, working with the NAACP and other organizations. Eagle, I forgot to mention the Eagle Network. Mm -hmm. I've been in conversation with Gary as well, Gary Edwards from Eagle Network. Mm -hmm. We are trying to do something different. We're trying to collaborate instead of just do our own thing. Mm -hmm. It's not about being a member of BCBBN. It's about a members and the people in the society and the community. Because if we improve black businesses, we lift all ships in the community to help everybody. And the money will not just stay in the black community. It'll stay in our community and everybody benefits. Well, I think what Tevra said was really key, though, that um, about the network, right, is that you may know mm -hmm. someone that another black business that might have reached out for some of this support, you know, got a phone, you know, shut on them, but that your connection could open a door for them. And that mm -hmm. really does speak to the importance of that network and, you know, creating, you know, finding the businesses and linking them together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, so Tebra, what are, what are your thoughts about how to continue to do that and to create that community? Well, um, this is kind of a twofold question for me. Um, internally, as far as like within the black community, but within, you know, people of color, um, <laughs> you know, we have to, again, the, the mistrust of, or mistrust, distrust, yes. the lack of trust amongst each other. Um, there is, you know, in any community, not exclusive to Bergen County, there are a lot of, you know, longstanding issues with, between factions and groups and, and all of those things, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like uh, uh, Karithia said, um, there's, you know, the Inglewood crew and the Hackensack crew and the Tina crew. I don't live in any of those places. So, <laughs> so but, you know, again, um, it's a matter of, you know, understanding that, you know, we're not always going to agree. And that was one of the things that Karithia and I discovered our first day. We're not always going to agree, but there's a lot to be we learned. Love each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> yes. And there's a lot to be learned by at least having that dialogue, at least explaining, you know, what my mission is as Bergen in Color and what her miss mission is with B the BCBBN. Because in that, I can I learn a lot from, from the BCBBN. I learn a lot from the Eagles. Yep. A lot, I, I, I learn so much from everybody. I kind of absorb it and, and use, you know, as necessary in my own business. But I think it's important to share and not keep it all to ourselves. So that's the internal issue. And I, I'm looking forward to the 
um, black business call that's that's being scheduled because I want those differences and differences of opinion and um, and ideas to actually be discussed in that call. So hopefully that will happen. I'm looking forward to it. And then the second part of my my answer is um, <laughs> that was two parts. <laughs> no, no, that was one part. <laughs> my second part, like I was saying, so I, I you know. Um, uh, Christy sent us the, or Jessica sent us the questions ahead of time. So I kind of made a, a thing I about too. it because I am a writer at heart. Um, so I have four S's. Um, mm-hmm. And so for the community at large, the North Jersey community mm-hmm. at large, these are ways that you can support black, brown, et cetera, businesses, um, LGBTQ, uh, mm-hmm. which we did not touch on. Um, they have, there's, you know, there are LGBTQ people who are black and who are Latino and who are Asian. So we can't forget about them um, because a lot of us are, are them as well. So um, the four S's uh, that I, that I made up um, seek shop, shout out and share. So to see, um, we want everybody, not just the black community to, to shop black businesses, you know, Helen, I want you to go, you know, get your hair done at, 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 mm-hmm. at, you know, Tina's with her salon. she could. <laughs> but, huh? Yeah, I know. Well, you know, a lot of our our salon owners they can do anything. They're they're amazing. Yeah. So um, seek out businesses owned by people of color um, because um, we tend to shop where we're most comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. But a lot of other places have a lot of the services that we need. So maybe do, making an effort to you know support some of these other businesses. Um, in your community, shop at a boutique owned by you know someone in Hackensack. There's a celebrities uh, boutique in um, on Cedar Lake. Don't get me the line, but there's there's several <laughs> boutiques to shop from. There's uh, fashionable pets in the mall. Um, they're uh, owned by a, a Latino group. So um, you know, let's make sure that we're we're actively seeking out minority owned businesses. Mm-hmm. Second, when we seek them out, we need to shop with them. Spend your money there. Spend your money. And then two, three, um, shout out. So, you know, shout them out. Like we've we've run the gamut of all the businesses that we've shouted out in this call. Mm-hmm. Shout out businesses so people can know this is a, something that exists. Like Tammy's in Wyckoff, you know, um, there there are organizations that are that, that are some of everywhere in Bergen County, Mawa included. Um, we need to make sure that we're we're spreading the word and spreading awareness of all of these businesses. And then mm-hmm. The fourth one is share. So going back to the crony capitalism, we need to make sure that among ourselves, we're sharing information, but outside of our our groups, we're sharing information with those who don't look like us, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So Bergen yes. and Color is open for anybody who wants to follow it. I'm not gonna you know, you. unfollow you if you're if you're white or whatever, but on the same token, if you have information that you feel like would be um, important for us to know, I ask that you share that with us so that we can spread the word as well. So we're all working hand in hand to make sure that, you know, it's never, I don't think it's ever going to be equal, but we want everybody to have a fair shake. And that's all I'm trying to do. Yep. Same here. And I wanted to comment, Helen, on the anti, the cronyism. I meant to bring this up before with the funding. We the, the cronyism, and let's just call it what it is. We've got a racist systemic system in America, okay, mm-hmm. founded on Slavery, okay? Let the, the purple elephant with the pink polka dots is on the floor, okay? So let's forget about that now mm-hmm. and focus on from here going forward. Mm-hmm. The, the bank relationships that the non-Black people have with their bank managers, I had a conversation yesterday with a, a business owner who was getting charged, I can't even tell you, an ungodly amount of money on bounced stuff because mm-hmm. she didn't have a close relationship with the manager and the manager was ignorant. So mm-hmm. just because you have a relationship, first of all, you need to have a relationship with a bank, a bank you can trust mm-hmm. that as a business owner, you need to have a banking relationship, just like you need an attorney and you need an account mm-hmm. if you don't and insurance. So if you don't have all those things, you shouldn't really have a business because you're going to be mm-hmm. exposed. Mm-hmm. So that's number one. Number two, you need to uh, educate your banker on your business. Mm-hmm. You need to tell them that you need to be in the loop on any money that comes available to you as a black business, which is why I focus on black business, because there's money available for Latino businesses that black businesses can't get, mm-hmm. unless they're also black. So my focus is not anti anything. Mm-hmm. It's not anti white. It's just pro black because we're the most underserved group in the world. Okay. I, well, can so, I interject real quick? Sorry. Yes. 
And when we say, you know, buy black, shop black, we're not saying don't shop anybody else. We're just saying include right. us in your practices of buying and receiving services. Just include us because we, you know, when we go to Walmart, it's not that we're shopping white, but we're going to Walmart. We're going to yep. shop. There. We're going to all of these places where we might not be the owners of it. But if we say, okay, in my shopping, I'm also going to go to this place and I'm also going to buy something from here and I'm also going to order from here. That helps the overall economy, not just the black economy, but go ahead. And that was my second point was that oh, we are not anti-white, we're pro-black. And right. I put my money where my mouth is. I'm not mm -hmm. wearing clothes and stuff. My makeup is a black owned woman business. Most of the time I have all my clothing and makeup and stuff from a, my dermatologist is a black woman business just because I don't know a black male dermatologist and probably people will be reaching out to me now telling me a black male dermatologist, but we just need to find each other and support each other. And also to that point, we need to stop giving each other the double standard. So if a non-black business made a mistake, we give them a benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. If a black business makes a mistake, it's because they're a black business. So we've got to get rid of our own racism issues with each other. I know there's a word for it. I don't care to know what it is, but I know there is one. We need to stop judging each other so harshly and be more gentle with each other. That's true. Well, I uh, I really appreciate this discussion, and I, I um and I also have to go back and say, Tevra, I liked your I loved your four S's. I think that that's um that really I'm makes it <laughs> I love it and concrete for everybody to really mm -hmm. embrace. And you know, I I can't say this enough. I mean, you know, um, there's so many people you know out there that you know talk about wanting to end racism. You know, we really can't think of a stronger way to do it other than supporting um, black businesses and businesses of color and, you know, creating economic equality because economic equality mm -hmm. is really where ending racism stems from. So we really need to, um, you know, step up, you know, uh, you know, as they say, walk the walk, the walk, you know, walk the talk. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know that, uh, again, Tevra, your your platform is just one of many but um you know one that really does it so well that showcases mm -hmm. and i do encourage everyone to make sure they're liking all of your you know your instagram page your mm -hmm. facebook page um and following you in particular not just liking it so that you can get the alerts and really you've been doing so many great programs now too that you're hosting and and it's a it's a tremendous opportunity for you know, those of us who, you know, really want to impact, you know, racism to, to, uh, to learn and to grow and to, um, you know, find new businesses to support. So I'm so grateful to you. And also to the Burton County Black Business Network, we continue at the YWCA to, um, you know, support the effort. And I do hope that this um, uh, opportunity now, this Facebook Live is able to get to new black businesses that weren't aware of either of these opportunities so that you can engage. Um, I think, you know, Tia really said it best a few weeks ago uh, is that, you know, um, collaboration, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, you lift, lifting each other up is really, um, you know, as a community is really, uh, you know, how we all rise together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she talked about how even though this was such a, a dark time, and as a mm -hmm. business owner, she really, you know, her heart hurt having to make decisions about her business that she had yeah. to, to be able to keep it going. And clearly, she's working harder than ever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. right now, but that she, you know, was able to go out her door and look to the right and look to the left, the business owners around her, they were That's able gone. to, you know, partner together to That's keep great. each other and you know I thought that that was a tremendous message and we heard it again week after week that we've been doing these um, small business conversations so um, it's it's uh, you know definitely where our focus should be so I encourage everyone again to um, we will attach all the links here so for anyone who is not um, aware of these uh, two opportunities that you become more familiar with both of them and these two ladies and the amazing work that they're doing. Thank you so much. Before you uh -huh. close, before you close, Helen, um, the Facebook page, we want people to come on our Facebook page and ask to be invited, you know, come to be asked mm -hmm. to be invited, answer the questions. I know we don't like answering questions, just like on Tevra's directory. By the way, we, our four initiatives, our events um, are doing a black business directory, specifically black businesses in Burton County, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. I work at my firm, so I'm an entrepreneur. 
Um, Tevra's working on one. We're working, we're collaborating together on that. We're supporting each other on everything we're doing where we can, where it's predictable for our two of us. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to be a black business owner to be on our Facebook page. Just mm -hmm. answer the questions so that we can accept you on the page. Because just everybody's not going on the page. We're not doing all sorts of different things. We're just focused maniacally on what we're doing, which is what makes it challenging. But it's a challenge that needs to be had because if I have a hard time finding all the black businesses in Bergen County, I'm sure a lot of people do. So there's a need. We believe there's a need. Well, Thank I think you. you've both proven that there is a need because of how both of your work has taken off. Um, and, you know, Thanks. we support you. I personally support you. And I'm, um, you know, grateful to have had this time to talk with you. This is not the last conversation. This is just going to be one of many where we continue um, continue talking. Again, we will link all of the sites here. Um, I do encourage you to, again, go back and like the Bergen County Black Business Network group page. I do encourage you to um, find Bergen in Color, both on Instagram, on Twitter, on um, Facebook, and to, uh, wait, did I miss any of them? Well, okay. <laughs> Bergen in Color is um, www.bergenincolor.com, where you can uh, join our mailing list, join our mailing list, yeah. uh, complete our 2020 survey, which is for everybody. And if you're a business owner, join the uh the free business directory. Um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, kind of, and uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where all of our Wednesday Bergen and Color live sessions are, um, are saved. So you can watch all of our conversations with Mayor Wobb, with Sheriff Curriton, everybody that I've talked to regarding COVID-19 in North Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked to some of everybody and we're going to continue that until um, I feel like we have done it enough. So, uh, forget, yeah. Huh? Don't forget, everybody needs to register on the 2020 census. Yes. Well, and, and I, yeah. Yeah, I was going to make sure before we close out that we say mm -hmm. a few announcements, right? Like mm -hmm. a little, a little kind of to-do list. One is mm -hmm. definitely make sure you're counted. Everyone mm -hmm. needs to be counted. Um, we've had two or three opportunities yesterday. We talked about it with, um, the Reverend and with Christopher Kwok a few weeks ago, we talked about it, you know, specifically at a whole show where we focused talking about the census. Mm -hmm. um, we all need to be counted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and every community specifically, I know Christopher Kwok talked about the Asian community, the Reverend talked about the black community. Um, everyone needs to be counted because we, that's where our resources come from into our communities. And it's a time like this, that we really know. You really understand that those resources are necessary. I think right now um, we're at forty-four percent completion for New Jersey. Yes, Uber, yeah. and that's that's an F. So we need to like make sure that we're getting. <laughs> it's an F. It's a solid F. So we need to make yeah. sure that we are getting everyone counted. Um, ICE is not going to come to your house. Law enforcement is not going to come to your house. We need but to services can. Services can come. Services can come to your house, and uh, even things like bus stops or the a number of coffee shops that show up, like all of those things. Um, now that we're in a, in a situation where people are actually looking for food to feed their families, oh. census data is what is driving a lot of these programs. So we need to make sure that we are counted in these numbers because if we're not counted, they don't know we exist. Yeah. So. And yes, and just to go back and reinforce, because I know that this came up on our two discussions yesterday with the Reverend and a few weeks ago with the census. And I know I hear it when I've been out in the community before we were, you know, social distancing is, you know, people just feeling that they don't want to be found. They're worried about, mm -hmm. you know, the information and that is it confidential and, you know, what, what could come from it. At the end of the day, um, you know, it is safe. Um, there are protections and federally, uh, you know, even within the uh, system that if they if they share information that there's a federal offense. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's safe to send mm -hmm. to uh, to fill out the census and it really works to your um, your, you know, individually. You know, it, it helps all of us. The other mm -hmm. thing is register to vote. If mm -hmm. you want not. Um, we even your local elections. Make sure yes. you do your local elections. Yes make sure we, we all register to vote. We um, Right now that you're home, there's a lot of opportunities to be hearing about the issues and the issues are what should drive you to, um, to the polls in November. So not only register, but actually get there. Tevra, Kree, you want to say on that? Oh, no. Um, I'm sorry. Nick, I believe has a mail-in election coming up. Um, yep. So make sure that uh, when you get your, your, is it May? It's May. Um, right. you know, when you get your ballot, make sure you fill it out and mail it back in. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but make sure you vote. Right. Okay. 
Right. The issue, the important <laughs> thing is that you are part supporting of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the important issue is that you're part of the process. And I do always encourage, and I especially, you know, uh, especially uh, have a, a, a place in my heart that we need to get more women of color running for office and yes. people of color here. for office. And we have to make sure that um, that's happening as part of this effort as well. But, um, you know, we're supporting our black businesses, but we also want to make sure that um, those that are, you know, um, making the laws and that are, you know, doling out the money mm-hmm. look like our entire community and not just like... Yep. Of it. So everyone, you know, Helen, I'm sorry, Helen, I forgot to mention that one of the things that drove me to do this is that I know that there's a lot of government contracts out there. And there's a thing called Community Reinvestment Act money that's available for communities like that or black, uh, our communities. And I've seen stories where multi-million dollar contracts were won because a white established organization, corporation, partnered with a small black business because they could not have obtained those multi-million dollar contracts without partnering. So hopefully this will be a venue in a marketplace, BCBBN, to bridge those relationships so that they can win those kind of contracts. Maybe you can't do it on your own, but maybe you could partner with a major corporation that is either hiring you, hiring your services, or partnering with you to do uh, contracts. Well, and I think that that should, um, you know, be one of our follow-up collaborations um, is making sure that we can have a conversation specifically around what's available and yes. how to assess it. But we'll keep that one for sure. Okay. Um, Thank and you. wrap up again, um, you know, as always, uh, everyone, please, you know, uh, stay healthy, stay safe during this time. You too. And, um, you know, we, uh, as I keep sharing everyone, please mind your mind. We know that, uh, you know, everyone's not having quarantinis and, you know, baking bread. Um, no. There's a lot of devastation happening right now. And mm-hmm. um, we need to be pray for mindful them. and pray and support and, um, you know, be thinking about those around us. You know, I, it's hard for me to believe that no one's been personally impacted at this point. But, you know, if, if you haven't, you know, it, it, it really is a privilege to be able to um, social breathe in home. You know, everyone doesn't have a home and doesn't have the opportunities yeah. But, um, you know, be mindful of what's happening around us for sure. Mm -hmm. We hope that you join us next week. Um, We have health and wellness um, uh, conversation with um, Mary Spinelli of Hysop Apothecary Beauty. who will share some easy skincare therapies and tips that you can do while you're home. Um, I don't think I've worn makeup in... (laughs) As this is my first. I've been home. This is my first time wearing clothes, business clothes, since March all, 11th. All I do is put a little lip gloss on right before I come on, and that's it. No, that's, um, yeah. But uh, you know, it is what it is at this it point. Is. You know, we we. Thank you, Helen. Thank so, you for doing this. Thank you for having us. Of and course, you, of course. And also later next week, we have Deborah Lancaster, who's the executive director of the Center for Women and Work at Rutgers University, and we'll oh, be talking. Cool about um, uh, focusing on our Why Women Vote series and having a conversation Mm -hmm. about that. On Thursday, we'll be talking about dealing with your child's anxiety um, as they've been home. Uh, I know I have uh, two little ones um, that- uh, Three, you have three. Oh, well, probably (laughs) more than that. (laughs) I have to start counting everyone in the house. But, um, you know, Mm -hmm. the reality of it is as we're home, Um, and, you know, children are sometimes maybe acting out, you know, you may not realize that it really is anxiety. I know my children are really missing being in school and being with their friends and, you know, we're not such great teachers sometimes, you know, (laughs) and so, uh, you know, they miss their teachers, but this is hard on them too, as much as it's hard and stressful on us. So I'm Mm -hmm. grateful to have Amy Edelstein, who's part of our healing space family, Mm -hmm. um, one of our clinicians to come talk a little bit about. Um, how to, um, you know, what that anxiety might be presenting, what it looks like, you know, with your child and how we can help them and how we can help ourselves manage our own stress to be able to help them. And we'll also- don't, for, don't forget about what your other initiative is with the um, anti-violence. So- Well, right- I was just about to say, Sorry. April is also Child Abuse Prevention Month. So we will also be having a conversation about that because as 
Um, you know, we, you know, for anyone who's not thinking about it, the reality of it is children can be stuck in their homes right now with their abusers mm -hmm. and have no way to be able to um, get that information out to get help um, when they're in school and in activities around the community. Someone might be able to notice they may be able to share to get some help. But right now we've really limited that in what we've created um, to try to keep everybody safe. It also has um, created some other obstacles and challenges. So we'll be talking about that next week as well. And, and we need to be we need to be paying attention to that when we're out and about, when we are able to go out of the house and well, see things. We need sure. to be cognizant. For sure, for sure. And we'll be ending next week with a conversation about how we're handling the new normal um, for mm -hmm. our work environments. So um, mm -hmm. we encourage you all to... Stay connected to these wonderful organizations and Tevra and to Carithia. Um, please share this uh, dialogue, this conversation with um, people who you think would benefit from it, who couldn't join us today. And most importantly, stay safe, have a good weekend, and thank you both for all the work you're doing in our community. And thank you, you, Helen, for having us. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye.